Hey, hey, Paul Peck here. Today, I'm going to show you everything you need to know to be able to skim coat your walls at your home. And if you stick around to the end, I'll show you all the tools I use and also how to mix up the joint compound for skim coating. Here's the walls I'm going to be skim coating. They're a knockdown texture. All right, so uh, basically, you just want to get the joint compound up there. And then you'll smooth it all out. You want to try and keep it consistent. So, uh, just dip your whole roller in the bucket. That way you can sink it and get plenty of mud on there. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name's Paul, and I've been a drywall and painting contractor for over 20 years. If you're looking to step up your drywall, texturing, or painting game, be sure to subscribe to my channel to keep up with all my latest videos. If you're doing a big wall, you want to do it in sections. If you're doing a small wall like this, say a bathroom, you can just go ahead and roll out the whole wall. But we're going to get this up there and then roll it all out to where it's pretty consistent. It's going to take two coats and maybe a touch-up coat of skimming for a smooth finish or if you're going to retexture. Just kind of working it around. So everything's covered. You don't want, it's not like painting. You want to leave the material on there, but you want it consistent. So you get a nice consistent skim coat. That's the key. That's the good thing about this paint roller trick. You get a very consistent application of the joint compound. If you're inexperienced trying to do it by hand, you're going to get kind of a, a more wavy look if you're not careful. If you look at it, you can see where it needs more mud. I'm not going to go all the way down because when I skim this out, I'll be able to hit that. I'm putting most of the pressure. I'm not hardly putting any pressure, but it's just the weight of the, the roller. But it's over on this side, so it's not leaving a line on the left side. Otherwise, you'd see exactly where the roller's been and where it hasn't been by the lines. 12 inch knife, 14 inch drywall pan. Let's start at the bottom. So again, I'm applying light pressure when I'm doing the skim coat. I'm not pushing real hard. I want to leave the material on the wall to cover the knockdown texture as much as possible. So basically, I'm just going along the wall, putting pressure on the left, lifting on the right, so I'm not leaving any big lines in the skim coat. You see the little ridges? Don't worry about those. Those will get filled on the second coat. Just like the roller, I'm putting pressure on a certain side. Putting it on the left side so I don't leave a line on the right side. If but even if you do have a few lines, once it's dry, you can scrape them off with your six inch knife. Let's get the bottom.
pressure on the left side, lifting the right side just barely. See how there's no lines from the knife? These chatter marks are from the texture. Second coat will make all that go away. All right, so there is the first coat with my paint roller trick. Well, you can see the texture is pretty much gone. I will be scraping the first coat after it's dry and then applying a second skim coat. Here's another tip for you. When you're done doing your first coat, you don't want to leave your roller nap just sitting out in the air because that's going to dry. If you put it in plastic, if you put it in plastic, like a, a plastic bag from your grocery store or, or just plastic, wrap it up it'll last for a day or two paint or junk joint compound you're not going to have to do anything to get rolling again here's a drying time tip for you if you put a fan on it it's going to speed up the drying time tremendously so uh, there's a tip for you hit it with a fan all right so i wanted to give you a, a view in the drying process i get a lot of questions on how do you know when it's dry you know your skim coat is dry when it's turned white. If you look over to the right side, you can see it's a little darker and above a little darker. It's dried right there because the fan was blowing there. You gotta move your fan around just a little bit. But you can see that it's, it's dry over here and still drying on the right side and above. It's been exactly one hour. Probably got another hour, it'll be completely dry. All right, the first skim coat is dry. No need to sand it. All you have to do is scrape off any high edges. Instead of sanding between coats, use a six inch drywall taping knife and just scrape the high ridges. Then you can recoat without sanding. Just scraping any of the higher ridges down with my six inch knife. This dried for two hours with a fan on it. So the fan really helps, especially on a painted surface when you skim coat over it. Doesn't tend to soak in like on a new drywall. I mean, not a lot of scraping at all. Second coat's not gonna have all these ridges. Okay, so I let the skim coat dry for two hours. I had a fan on it. If you don't have a fan, it's gonna take a little longer. So I went ahead and spun the skim coat mud one more time to get it all mixed up again. It's been sitting for two hours. So here we go, round two of skim coating. Let me know in the comments why your walls need a skim coat. want to get it up there and then you're going to smooth it out after you roll it over and make it all consistent. I'm going the opposite direction than I did on the first coat. Just trying to fill any voids 
a different way. Grab my mud pan, 12 inch knife. Going along the bottom so it's kind of smoothed out a bit. Let me know in the comments if you're a DIYer, a contractor, painter, handyman. Just kind of curious. I see a couple little areas that are dry, so I'm just going to hit it with some mud. No big deal. I'm going to go over this one more time. Smooth it all out. All right, got that skim coated. Gonna let it dry. Might need a little touch up, but other than that, we're pretty looking good. This coat will dry a lot faster than the first coat because it's going over a joint compound, so it absorbs right in it. Here I'm using a sanding sponge that's 100 grit on one side and 150 grit on the other. Since it's not a lot of heavy mud buildup, I'll be using the 150 grit. But for some of you, you might need to use the 100 grit to get her down for the next step. All right, so here's the tools I'm gonna to be using to roll on the joint compound with. I'm using a USG all-purpose joint compound 20 volt DeWalt cordless drill that I'll be using and a paint mixer to thin down the joint compound. You want to thin it down to about a yogurt consistency. I'll also be using a 14 inch mud pan, a 12 inch drywall taping knife, and a six inch drywall taping knife. This is the roller I'll be using. It's a three quarter inch lambskin roller cover and then a, a roller handle and a five gallon paint grid to roll off the excess joint compound so I can get a nice consistent coat on the wall. So what I like to do is separate the five gallon bucket in half. That way it's easier to mix instead of trying to mix it all in a full bucket of joint compound. I'll be mixing the skim coating mud to a yogurt like consistency. Got my paint mixer. I'm just going to add a little water as I go. I don't want to get it too soupy. What you want to do is work it up from the bottom. That way the water gets saturated throughout. little more water and then I'm gonna let it sit for about 10 minutes because it does tend to tighten back up 
So let it sit for about 10 minutes and then get it to the consistency that you're looking for. An easy way to test it is just get some on your knife and watch it come off. A little thicker than yogurt. If you're going over a smooth wall, you can go ahead and thin it down even more. But if you're going over a texture, you want to kind of keep the consistency of the mud as much as possible. If you're rolling it on, to be able to do that, you have to have it just thin down a little bit more than you want. All right, so we'll add a little more water and then let it set. 10 minutes. That looks good to cover this texture and roll it on. All right, we'll let that sit for 10 minutes. All right, it's been 10 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and just add a little more water because I know it's gonna need it. I've probably put in six to eight ounces of water. Pretty much go by feel and how it looks. Feel free to ask me any questions about how to mix up the joint compound if you didn't get it quite clear in the video. Also, the paint mixer that I'm using attached to my cordless drill. You can get it any of the big box stores like Lowe's or Home Depot in the paint section. If you did mix it too thin, you could go ahead and just add a little more joint compound and start the process over again. Watch this video next if you want to use a paint roller for skim coating on a ceiling. Also hit that round icon to subscribe to my channel for more drywall tips and tricks. Thanks for watching. Oh,